Well, hey, Man Cave Ins. This is Bob from the Bob's End Scale Man Cave, and today is another series episode in how I'm building this White Pass and Yukon Bridge. And today it's something that you guys have been waiting for and waiting for, and I know I'm finally getting to it today because I'm in quarantine. And I was waiting until I get to the point where I have to start putting track on the bridge and lining it up with the other tracks that are coming in on either side. So I'm down to that point where I need to start putting track on the bridge. Also, I gotta put some wire through it. I have to put the bus line in to go from one end to the other because, well, I need to somehow get a bus line to go through that bridge and to the other side. Now, I'm not going to wire up any feeders on this eight foot long bridge. I'm just going to solder all the rail and the feeders are going to be actually on the outside of that module. So the, all the feeders will be right there connected to the jumpers going from one section to the other and I'll have plenty enough power to go through that area. So let's get right down to it, shall we? Okay, first things first. Before I start putting track down, I wanted to figure out how to put the bus line on this bridge. And I had multiple choices to go with. You know, I've got my uh, 14 gauge wire, you know, one black, one red. I know I'm supposed to keep the color codes white and red, but black was a little bit darker and I was, well, it's a lot darker than white actually. But if I was going to use black, I could use that as sort of camouflage on the bridge. So I thought of a number of ways. Should I glue it to the side of the bridge? Should I run it through this copper pipe? Basically, it's a copper coil right there. Anyway, but I thought if I take this and I glue it to the side of the bridge, was that going to be good enough? Since it was black, I was going to have to use two black ones and then I have to keep track of the polarity of which one is which. Really not that difficult if you're paying attention and you mark them, you should be fine. I wasn't sure if I should use some of the Gorilla Wood glue or should I use the Elmer's clear glue or white glue or should I have gone with some uh, super glue. There was a backup plan and that was using tie straps. And another backup plan was electrical tape. I thought I thought of this ahead of time when I was designing this bridge. He says, you know, Bob, you've got space in here to just hide the wires. Why don't you just do that? I have room to fit it in there, and no one's going to ever see the black wire against this dark brown. So that's what I'm going to do. OK, as you can see in the bottom of this bridge, I've got all these stringers that go underneath the rails so I know exactly where to line up my track when I lay it down. Um, and have all these gaps in between and this gap right here is the far back side of the bridge from view. So I'm going to slide my wires right through here right, and then through the sides here I've got this space on that other side. So I can run the wires out through the side here and then eventually up and over to the, the rest of the bus line. It's actually probably the easiest solution I could come up with. So I'm going to bend one side up here so it doesn't uh, always hit. Okay, the wire comes out on the other side and uh, I've got an extra amount of length on there just for uh, uh, just in case. I'll cut off a good amount on this side and roughly about you know that long that left over on each side. And then I'm going to run the second one through there. Before I put the other piece in there, 
This first one here, I'm going to use this as my uh, white wire. And so I'm going to uh, mark that down with a piece of electrical tape so that I know that that's, my, that's the same wire on the other end. With a little manipulation, and this really helps if you got two people, one to push on the other side with the wire, and the other one to fish it through the side. Uh, I was able to do one at a time, got one of them in, and wiggled this in because it's kind of twisted and everything else. But once I got the tweezers in there and pulled that out, I could pull this out through the side. And now I've got some wire that I can use. And I'm going to pull out the amount up to that tape. There we go. So now I got the tape right there. And that should be good. Now I got to do the other side the same way. You know, sometimes you just have to put that other board up here and get a little uh, creative with how you line everything up. Put some blocks of wood underneath this thing here to hold it up so I get about the same height as the bridge. Then I laid out all my track that I need along the bridge. Glue it down, maybe solder it down first and then glue it down and uh, we'll see how it goes. Well, I've uh, got all the track uh, connected together with some rail joiners. Um, you know, kind of cut my thumb a little bit trying to push some of these things on. Uh, you know, I wish I had that um, sidekick tool, which I don't. I'll probably have to go pick one up, I think. You're not a real model railroader until you get some blood on your rails. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do some soldering and solder all those rails together. And then I'm going to put some wood glue on it and glue it all down nice and straight. One trick to uh, cleaning off your flux, use some uh, rubbing alcohol, denatured alcohol, the, you know, the, the typical rubbing alcohol. Take your uh, acid brushes and you see how long that hair is on there? It's all horse hair. You just cut it down to a smaller, stubby, and stiffer bristles and that'll get right into the, the crevices on your solder and your joints and stuff to clean out that flux. So basically I am just uh, taking the glue, putting it down, smearing it around on here side to side to get coverage underneath the rails. And now I'm just going to make it uh, line up with the stringers that are down inside the bridge as my guide. I'm also going to take this handy uh, straight tool for making your, tra your track straight. I'm just going to run this down the middle make sure I got my track as straight as I can get it. Okay, so that is in the right place. Okay, I've got all three tracks glued down now. And that's uh, where I've been dying to get to this point for a long time. Did have to clamp down a into the track there to make sure everything was staying where it wanted to because that piece down there was lifting up a little bit and so holding it in place while it dries. Well there you go man caveans that's been this White Pass and Yukon bridge build finally completed. I don't have it quite installed yet but you get the drift it's going to be installed it's going to be in place and uh, I'll probably include that in my layout update series that I'm doing right now on phase three. And so when I install that, I'll put that into that video. So if you want to see that, it's pretty much uh, the same kind of deal. I'm just going to uh, put some 
solder loose connectors on it, crimp them down, and uh, hook them up. So it, really nothing really to show you there except trains running across it. That would be cool. So if you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up. Ring that bell down below so you get notified of new videos. Even consider subscribing. You know, why not? And then, you know, tell your friends. Share the video. And uh, as always, Mancavians, happy model railroading. And you stay off those tracks. Bye.